This instructional video about using the Turnitin tool in conjunction with eCollege is proudly brought to you by the Instructional Technology Team at St. Leo University. Questions about this instructional technology tool can be addressed to our email address, instructional.technology at stleo.edu. This short video introduces you to the Turnitin features that are built into the eCollege online learning management system in conjunction with the Dropbox tool. After watching this video, you should be able to create a Dropbox in eCollege, adjust the Turnitin preferences for that Dropbox, and access the originality report for a Dropbox assignment. Turnitin is a text matching or plagiarism detection software that compares documents submitted via the eCollege Dropbox tool with a database of content, including other students' assignments, scholarly articles, internet content, and more. It is a tool that not only helps faculty detect plagiarism, but can also be used as a developmental tool to help students improve their writing. Sign in to your eCollege course as you normally would, and click on the Author tab to enter Authoring Mode. I'm going to demonstrate two different ways of creating a Dropbox. If you already have an existing module content item in your menu that you wish to use, you will use this first method. If you need to create a new module content item in the course menu, you will use the second method. First, in the course menu, click on the module where you would like to place the Dropbox. I am going to click on Module 2 in my example. I already have a module content item within Module 2 called Case Study 2, which I'm going to click. I've already typed text for the content item. I just need to attach a new Dropbox to it. To do so, I click on the existing module content item on the left and then click the toolbox button at the top. From the toolbox page, I click the option to create Dropbox basket and then click the save changes button. This existing module content item, case study 2 in this example, now has a new Dropbox affiliated with it. If I click the Dropbox tool from the tools menu at the top, I can see the new Dropbox, named Case Study 2, in the list. The method I just demonstrated applies if you already have an existing content item. However, if you don't already have one, you will have to create one, which is the second way of creating a new Dropbox. In my new example, I'm going to click Module 2 in the menu, since that is where I would like to place my Dropbox. Next, I click on the Module Content Items button near the top. Remember, this method creates a new module content item for the Dropbox. Now I'm going to click on the Add Items drop-down menu and select Add Placeholder for Content. First, I will type a name for my module content item. Next, from the Item Type drop-down menu, select Text Multimedia. Be sure to click the Create Dropbox Basket checkbox. Lastly, click the Add Items button. Notice that the module content item that you created appears in the course menu on the left, as well as in the module content items list on the right. From the course menu on the left, click on the module content item that you just created. Since this is a new module content item, a blank editing box will be displayed on the right, where you can type an explanation of the assignment, attach a rubric, or write any other directions that you'd like. I'm going to write a brief instructional statement with the deadline for my students. Click the Save Changes button at the bottom. If I click on the Course tab at the top to exit authoring mode, I will see my new module content item as students will see it. So we've looked at the two different ways of creating a new Dropbox, whether or not you have an existing module content item. Now we're going to explore how to enable Turnitin for a Dropbox and then change the Turnitin settings. Remember, I must be in Author mode by clicking on the Author tab at the top. If I click on the Dropbox tool from the Tools menu at the top, I will see a list of all of the Dropboxes in the course. The one that I just created, which I named Module 2 Assignment 5, appears in this list. Notice that next to it, there's a column indicating how many items are waiting in the Dropbox's inbox, as well as a column indicating whether or not the Turnitin features are enabled for each Dropbox. To enable Turnitin for a Dropbox, click the Edit button next to that Dropbox. I am now looking at the Edit Basket Names page, which allows me to modify names, 
enable Turnitin features, and modify Turnitin settings for each of my Dropboxes. Next to my new Dropbox, I'm going to click the checkbox to enable Turnitin for that Dropbox. Notice that once I check that box, a settings icon appears next to it. I will click this settings icon to modify the Turnitin settings for that Dropbox. It is important that you adjust these settings at the beginning of every new term, since they are reset to generic defaults for each section. A new window will pop up containing that Dropbox's Turnitin settings. You will see the words Update Paper Assignment in a gray bar near the top, followed by the assignment title. You do not need to enter the point value of the assignment, since this point value is independent of the eCollege gradebook. On the right, you will see three different assignment dates. Adjusting these dates is a crucial step to complete at the beginning of every term, since the dates will be set to invalid default settings each time a new course section is created. The start date is the date you wish students to be able to begin submitting assignments. The due date is the cutoff date for the assignment, after which time students will no longer be able to submit assignments to this Dropbox. The post date is very important since that is the date that scored papers become available to students, where they will be able to view their originality reports, as well as any comments or scores entered into the grade mark feature by the instructor. You should set this immediately after the due date, unless you wish to delay it. Use the drop-down menus for each date to adjust the day and time. These are the basic settings for Turnitin for this Dropbox. However, you should also pay attention to the optional settings, which can be adjusted by clicking the plus symbol next to Optional Settings. From this expanded list, you can adjust many more settings for this Dropbox assignment. You can always click on the question mark icon next to each option for more information. Here are some of the most important options that you will need to adjust each term. Do you want to allow submissions after the due date that you selected above? You can also control how the originality reports are treated. There are three options. The first is, immediately, first report is final. With this option selected, your students will not be able to resubmit to the assignment. The second option is, immediately, can overwrite reports until due date. With this option selected, students can continuously resubmit papers to the assignment until the due date. You may want to remind students ahead of time that it may take up to 24 hours to process originality reports for resubmissions. The third option is On Due Date. This option will only generate a similarity report on the assignment's due date. This setting will make it so that all papers submitted to the assignment will be compared against each other when the originality reports are created. If you would like students to be able to view their full originality reports, change this option to Yes. If you leave this option on the default No choice, students will only be able to view their overall similarity percentage. You can also control whether or not the E-Rater grammar check is run, which can provide students feedback based on their grammar. Be sure to explore all of these options. When you're done modifying the options, click the blue Submit button at the bottom to save your new settings. Lastly, click the Save Changes button below the list of Dropboxes. So far, I have demonstrated how to create a new Dropbox, enable Turnitin for that Dropbox, and adjust Turnitin settings. After students submit their assignments and originality reports are run, you can quickly see an overview of originality scores and other information by clicking on the Dropbox tool from the Tools menu at the top and then clicking on a particular Dropbox name. The first column lists the student names. The second column is an icon on which you can click to download a copy of the raw file submitted by the student. Submission date and time is listed in the third column, followed by grades if applicable. The return checkbox will return the submission to the student along with any grades or comments that you added. The last column displays each submission's originality report score. You will click on the score if you want to view the entire originality report. We're going to take a closer look at interpreting this originality report in the next video segment.